Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm reviewing the new album from Royce the Five Nine, The Book of Ryan. Alright folks, before starting this actual review here today, I am aware that Royce was already part of the second Prime album that was released earlier this year, uh, and the reason why I haven't reviewed that yet uh, is because I haven't listened to the first Prime album, so uh, it is on my list of albums to get to. I definitely will have a review for that second Prime album that's going to be hopefully coming out sometime in the near future in one of my catch-up reviews. Uh, I just wanted to say this so you didn't think I like didn't know that that existed or something like that. It is on my get you know list of things to get to, uh, but uh, hopefully that should be coming out in the next couple of months. Hopefully, but yeah, I know it exists and I will be reviewing it. Uh, but moving on to the Book of Ryan here today, uh, I was really looking forward to this album, given that I really liked Royce's last album, Layers. I thought it was a pretty good project. Didn't quite make my top 10 albums of 2016, back when I made that video. Uh, but if I was to do like a top 20 albums of 2016, which is probably what I would have done, you know, had I been making that video today, uh, it, it definitely would have been on that list. Uh, because I did really enjoy that project. And going into this project, I was hoping to enjoy this one. Uh, just as much, if not more. And overall, I also do really enjoy The Book of Ryan. It's definitely a very personal album. Going into this album, you're going to learn a thing or two about Royce, whether or not you're like the most hardcore fan, or if you're someone who's never heard of him before, uh, and this is your first exposure to him. If, that, if that's the case, you're definitely going to learn a lot about him here on this project. The whole concept behind this album really is that uh, he's talking to his son, who is uh, you know, asking uh, him something about it, like a school project, and he wants to know more about his father, and so his father's kind of explained to him things from his own life, lessons he's learned, things of that sort, of course, through the music itself. There are a couple of skits that pop up here throughout this album. However, I never really felt like they took away from the flow of the project overall, especially because it does tie it back to that concept of Royce talking to his son, which I thought was a pretty decent idea overall a very interesting, you know, just concept for an album. And it's a very good way for Royce to kind of share some of these personal stories with uh, his audience without it just, you know, with having it be a concept album, but not just, uh, you know, him just throwing out random stories that happen to him. He's able to tie it all back together to this one discussion with his son. Despite this album having that solid concept to it, the stories that Royce decides to tell about his own life are a bit you know, all over the place, but not necessarily in a bad way. You get to hear lots of different stories from when he was young and growing up. Some of the stories are happy, some of them are sad, some of them are more, you know, lead to more introspective moments on this project. There's a nice mix of things here, and it's not necessarily told in chronological order either. You really are just getting like a bunch of stories thrown here and there throughout this album, but in a sense it almost creates like, you know, like a story in a sense, because you get to know Royce more throughout this project, as well as some of the other people in his family, these reoccurring characters in this story that he's telling, only it's not really a story, it's his own life. For example, one of the tracks I thought was really interesting was the track Cocaine, where he's talking about his father and discovering that his father was using cocaine, and of course, later on he talks about how his father gets off cocaine and how he chose his family and them over, you know, cocaine, and I thought that was a very you know, just cool concept already as it is, but then there's a bit more depth added to it uh, with the fact that Royce is kind of reflecting on the fact that uh, addiction runs in his family to an extent, and that would affect him and, you know, his addiction to alcohol at one point in his life. Uh, and then, of course, later on in the album, on a different track, I know he's reflecting and he's t talking to his son, or, or rapping to his son, rather, and he's, you know, scared that his son may also fall into the same trap. He's afraid of his son drinking because he's afraid that he's also going to become an alcoholic like his father was, uh, which, you know, also leads back to his father, who was an addict as well. I think that was a really interesting, you know, concept to bring up, how he connects this story about his father, and, you know, you have that story on its own, which is fine on its own as it is, but he also extends it into this own aspect of his life, and that extends even further into how he raised his own kids. And that's another reoccurring theme throughout this album. Royce just doesn't reflect on his past. He also t does that and then relates it to how he uh, raises his own kids and how, you know, his own experiences grew up affected how he became a father figure. You also have the very interesting track, Power. And this track reminds me of... The storytelling on this track, first of all, is amazing. Uh, you have Royce telling these different stories about his family during, like, the holiday seasons, different holiday seasons. 
and just some of the conflicts that arose during this time concerning his father, his mother, his brother, all these figures. Uh, I really can't do it justice just explaining here, but trust me when I say listen to this track, if you're going to listen to any on this album, it's a perfect example of the storytelling that Royce is able to do throughout this project. And it also has a very kind of dark, intense atmosphere to it. Listening to this track, there's just a lot of tension in it. It reminds me a bit of some of like earlier Eminem songs, like where he's talking about his family and stuff, just without the you know insane overblownness that those tracks had and without the comedy that those songs at times had as well. This one is played, you know, straight, it's very serious, uh, but it still is very tense, and it's just a very interesting listen, especially given that it is the longest song here in the track listing. It, it manages to justify its runtime, and there wasn't a second of its runtime that I found myself bored or wishing that we get to the next track or something like that. It's a very, it's a very uh, compelling listen, and it's easily one of the highlights on this album. Throughout the album, the production is pretty good. It matches the tone and the feel of all these tracks nicely. Like I said, lots of the, these tracks have a variety of feels to them. Some of them have a very upbeat, kind of happy feel, like Royce is reflecting on happy memories that he had growing up. Other times, it's more tense and foreboding, like on the track Power that I was talking about before. Other times, it's a bit more sad and somber, like on Cocaine, which I also mentioned before. The production always matches whatever the feel of the track is rather nicely, in my own opinion. While overall, I feel like this album is very solid and very enjoyable, there are a few small problems that I have with it. Particularly, I feel like the start and the end of the album are a bit disconnected from the overall concept of the project. It takes a couple of tracks in before we have that skit where Royce is talking to his son and, you know, the kind of, the whole concept of the album really begins. And I mean, technically, going to the very beginning of the album, you do have some of the themes that are later explored on the album brought up on this, you know, these first four tracks, really, though two of them are technically skits, so really it's only two tracks. Uh, some of those themes are brought up there and later expanded on. However, I do really feel like the album should have started off with just the, you know, main focus of the concept, I think that would have made it a bit stronger, just because I feel like the start as a result of it is one of the weaker points on this project. The first uh, four tracks, though technically two of them are skits, uh, I don't think the two actual songs that we get here are bad necessarily, I think they're actually pretty enjoyable, it's just that they feel a bit disconnected from the rest of the project, and considering how conceptual a lot of the rest of the project is, and how consistent it is, it just felt a bit out of place in my opinion. I do also want to talk about the track Caterpillar, which is the second one of these tracks that appears in the beginning of the album, or the second full song, I mean not including the skits. Uh, it's a pretty solid song in my opinion, I know this was one that's going to have a lot of buzz surrounding it possibly, considering that it features Eminem on the track, and concerning what I think about Eminem's verse on here, I think it's pretty solid overall. It's not one of his best verses ever or anything quite like that, but it's pretty solid in my opinion, and it's much better than anything that he was doing on Revival, which is what I'm happy to see. It's overall a pretty solid verse, like I said, it's not something that I think is going to go down as one of his best features or anything quite like that, but, you know, it's, it's solid, him and Royce have good chemistry, uh, and it's overall just a very solid track overall. It doesn't really fit in all that nicely to the concept of the album, especially at this first, you know, this first leg of the album, really, but it is a solid track, and, you know, Despite the fact that I feel like this opening part of the album is a bit disconnected from the rest of the project, at least the actual content that we get here is still pretty enjoyable. I also feel like the end of the album, the last few tracks here, also feel a bit disconnected from the overall concept of the project. There are, you know, parts that are reminiscent of the, of the themes that are present in the main bulk of the album. It's not like it's a completely different, you know, separate thing or anything like that. But I do, don't, I do feel like it is a little bit disconnected, like the first few tracks as well, and as a result, I really feel like the middle part of this album is the most cohesive and strong part, whereas like the beginning and the end are the weak points overall. Even though that the beginning and the end still have, you know, some strong tracks in there as well that I think are overall good songs, but maybe they don't quite fit in as nicely with the rest of the concept as a lot of the tracks in the middle part of this album. I do really also like the track Strong Friend, where Royce is talking about, uh, you know, keeping an eye on of on all your friends, particularly those that may seem, you know, strong and seem like they don't necessarily need help or anything quite like that, because maybe those people actually are, you know, struggling with things in their own life. Of course, this track talks about suicide in particular, and how, you know, sometimes it's the strong people that, you know, you don't expect or that are going through this stuff that actually are, and as a result, you know, sometimes these unfortunate things happen to them. So Royce is kind of saying to keep an eye on all your friends, regardless of whether or not they seem strong and okay, or if they're, you know, clearly crying out for help. 
I thought it was just a very nice track overall. I really love the message of the song, and it's easily one of my favorites for that reason. So overall, I feel like The Book of Ryan is a great album overall. It definitely met my expectations uh, for a follow-up to Layers, and I think it's overall just a very solid album through and through. I really like the concept of this project. It's not super complex or anything like that. It's really just a nice way for Royce to share a lot of uh, personal stories uh, from his youth and how they affected him growing into a father figure. I love the range of topics he's able to address as a result of this, and the wide array of emotions and memories that he's able to pull from on this project. Even some of the cuts on here that, like I said, that appear towards the middle, I don't know, rather the beginning and the end of this project, that are kind of disconnected from the middle part, are, are still pretty solid songs overall and are still pretty enjoyable. The production is strong, the features for the most part are pretty good, uh, there's not really all too much to complain about with this project. It's, it's, it's a pretty solid album through and through. If you like good storytelling and hip-hop, if you like, uh, if you, if you want to really know more about, uh, Royce the Five Nine and his own personal life, uh, this is definitely the album that you're looking for because he's definitely gonna, you're definitely gonna learn something about him listening to this project because, uh, he, he's definitely revealing a lot of stuff here on this project that I thought was very entertaining, very enjoyable to listen to, and at times, you know, I can see a lot of people also relating to this project and what he's talking about here on this album. Overall, I think that this is a great project. It's one that if you're a fan of hip-hop, uh, you, you need to have on your radar because it is, like I said, a pretty great project. But yeah, that's just my own opinion. Feel free to have your own. In fact, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future music-related content, uh, album reviews, top tens, things like that. Like I said, I'm gonna have that Prime 2 album review as part of the catch-up review sometime in the near future, hopefully in the next couple of months. Uh, so yeah, expect that sometime in the future. If you want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay golden.